dirty, dirty, disgusting house. Oh. I mean, cockroach infested house oh. is horrible. And you don't want to put your jacket down anyway. Uh, lately, experts have been talking about how the number of skilled workers has been going down. And as that number is going down, our demands for them are as great as ever. That's right. We still need construction workers, plumbers, electricians. We still need these things in order for our society to function. Now, if you know anything about supply and demand, you know that as the number of skilled workers go down and the demand goes up, that only equals one thing. Ka ding If you're interested in finding out how you can get in on that cash flow, keep watching. I'm Jordana. I've been a college counselor, college admissions rep, and adjunct professor while married into the military. I've lived in New York City, Savannah, Alabama, and even Korea with my husband and two baby boys. I don't know where we're moving next, but I do know that counseling teens towards their future has stayed the passion of my heart. So that's how I got to be here right now with you, helping you take the next step in your journey towards your future. Hi, hello. <laughs> Come on in and take a seat on the counseling couch. Hi, you're watching Journey with Jordana, helping you take the next step in your journey towards your future. Come on in and take a seat on the counseling couch, but you're gonna have to move over because I have a special guest today. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Phil. Now, Phil is one of those workers in a highly skilled trade field. In fact, his specialty is plumbing. Hold on, I know what you're thinking. I don't wanna become a plumber. I'll just skip ahead to the next video, but don't do that. His story is pretty amazing. It has some really beautiful and inspiring nuggets of truth that can apply to anyone's life. It can apply to your life. So keep watching. So how does it feel to know that you're always in demand? It's good, it's good. <laughs> it's a job security. <laughs> That's great. How long have you been a plumber? So I don't know, I was 25 as a helper. Mm -hmm. I know, 56 now, so. Wow. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide to become a plumber? It, it wasn't my first choice. Pick it out, I would just start a trade. Pick it out of all the trades, uh, you know, from electrical to carpentry and plumbing. I, I, uh, so I knew someone who yeah, was, was a pl had a plumbing company. Mm -hmm. So I figured, let me talk to him. Mm -hmm. I figured that's somewhere to start. And so I talked to him and I got hired as a helper. And I figured one day I'd just make my own, get my license venture on my own, and then uh, I'd be my own boss. I feel that's what I wanted to do. You know, I hated people telling me what to do and stuff. So mm -hmm. I can be my own boss and I'm, I'll be happy, you know? And I think so, a lot of people can relate to that. Like yeah. there are a lot of, I'm sure a lot of you are like, uh, you know, corporate America is <laughs> not for me. I want to be my own boss. And yeah. so here's an option for you. Yeah, I, mean, I worked in an animal hospital for a couple of years. It was mm -hmm. a nice job and I wasn't making money there, you mm -hmm. know, on the Department of Corrections for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. That was great money, but a horrible job. <laughs> I'm having fights in there and fights mm -hmm. and... So I didn't like that, then I went into banking. Mm -hmm. That was no good right after corrections. I had that mean attitude mm -hmm. towards the customers. So that, <laughs> that didn't work out. So what do you want? I figured, out, let me get into my own business. And, uh, <laughs> took a couple of years to get that correction attitude out of you. you yeah. know, but, uh, and what also I appreciate it hearing you say is even in terms of, you tried a couple of different things. Right. And I know some of you, you feel really afraid, like, oh, I have to get it right the first time. But you yeah. don't, you can have a fabulous career yeah. after you tried a few things and then you can stumble upon what's right for you. So what's an average day like being a plumber? That's one thing about plumbing. Every day could be different. You don't know what you're going to get. You can get no calls and you sit around doing nothing, especially mm -hmm. in your own business. Or you can get 10 calls all at once. But uh, most of the job people call for a leak under the sink or the faucet. They need a new faucet, mm -hmm. water heater, you know, a leak uh, from one floor to the next. And then you got to diagnose what it is. That's like an average day, you know. Okay. What's the best thing about being a plumber? Well, again, best, I think the best thing is about being a plumber is that if I'm my own, in my own business now, mm -hmm. it's at my own pace. Mm -hmm. I don't get to answer to anybody, you know, and uh, the money is nice. It's, mm -hmm. You can make nice money with plumbing, you know, as long as you're honest and you don't want to rip people off. I mm -hmm. sleep good at night. I give people breaks, especially elderly. I, I treat everybody like my mother. Oh. Like, I, I, like this is my mother's house is what I would do. So mm -hmm. yeah, I can't go wrong with that, you know. Nice. And it's, it's good feeling that you're helping people out. You go in the house, these people, are, they, they're crazy sometimes. They have a problem and you go in there and you fix it and they, they look at it like you're God sometimes. Like, oh, <laughs> you're my hero. You fixed it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you're the greatest, you know. So it's a good feeling sometimes sometimes helping people out. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason why I got into business. I just wanted a small business. I think it was just to survive, mm -hmm. just spend the money and you help mm -hmm. you know, your neighbors out and you know, your neighbor community, you know? Right. So, okay, we asked the best, so I have to ask, what's the worst thing about being a plumber? The worst is sometimes you get nasty people, dirty, dirty, disgusting houses. Oh. I mean, cockroach infested houses, oh. horrible. And you don't want to put your jacket down anywhere. Oh, no. You got to kind of t tell, well, I got to the truck for a second, put your jacket out there, and then come back in without your jacket. We go into uh, houses all over. Mm -hmm. I try not to look at people's houses, I just walk through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't help, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, I, had a, I went into a house once, I thought it was a rug on the basement floor, it was actually mold. <gasps> Two inches of mold growing up. I'm walking in. I don't know what the heck it was. You know. Oh so, uh, my goodness. And the smells in people houses. Oh, some of them. One lady I went into a house. It was it was literally. She was an old lady. There's literally feces all over her floor. 
I had to realize I'm walking in feces. Mm -hmm. The kitchen, and I had she wanted me to fix her faucet, to change the faucet. I just said, you know, I gave a very high price. and said it was too much, mm -hmm. and I just I didn't want to do the job, yeah. so I yeah. gave a high price just to, uh, you know, just <laughs> like, to get out of the yes, job. Yes, I gotta go. That wasn't too far. It was a nice area too, but it was just, I think because she was elderly, she had no one to take care of her. Yeah. That, uh, but I just couldn't work in the house. It was so yeah. so bad. Yeah. It could be pretty disgusting. Yeah. And I was working on a job once. I cut the pipe and I told the lady, don't use anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a hole with the sewer pipe cut. And you can imagine what happens. I hear the flush and while the water comes down, I'm in the pit and no. all her feces and urine no. comes right into the hole Ew. where I am. So oh, that, you wanted the worst I gave you. Oh, that is the worst. <laughs> so, that is the worst. <laughs> I was gonna ask you what the craziest thing that's, has happened, that's, but so that's it seems it. like all of that is like the worst and craziest all, right. all mixed together. Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> oh no, <that's> pretty bad. <laughs> all right. So, what are the most important skills that a plumber needs to have? Skills with using tools, of course, mm -hmm. gotta be handy, and just common sense too, because you're you're like the problem solver. Mm -hmm. When you go in the house, you don't know what's gonna. Every job, you, you don't. You're gonna try to take something apart. Something else is gonna break over here, okay. and you gotta really figure out how to get out of that trouble, how to fix it. You gotta be like a little bit of a MacGyver type of guy. Yeah. Have a truck load of stuff, know what you have on your truck too. And when you're looking at a job, okay, I know I have this, this in the truck, I could put this, this on. Are there any particular like school subject that would lead to them being a plumber or are there any other hints that might tell them you might be a good plumber? Math is good because in plumbing you gotta do a lot of measuring and become a licensed plumber. You, there are formulas and formulas and formulas. Okay. You have to memorize formulas okay. to interpolate and calculate how, what kind of pressure pump you're gonna need to pump the water up so high. And okay. So you do have to, you know, you have a little bit of smarts up here. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to deal with people because they, if they're not going to like you, they'll call the boss to complain and uh, they'll send someone else over. No matter what you do, you have to be likable. Right. I was one of those guys that was likable. So mm -hmm. uh, when the boss had a problem with some people, he would send me over there. Okay. I was like the pacifier. <laughs> you know, it was great. It was my thing, you know, so I'd go over there and talk to the people, do a little, give them a break on something, help them out, fix the problem. And then they usually send a letter like, Phil has restored my faith and, you know. <laughs> Nice. In, your, in your company nice. now, so uh, yeah. that's how I knew when I went into my own business, mm -hmm. I figured I would survive because mm -hmm. if you're nice to people and you're honest and you give them a good price and a good yeah. good job, mm -hmm. how can you fail? So I've heard different things about what it takes to become a plumber. Like I've heard like that you have to have a license and then I've heard about apprenticeships mm -hmm. and then I've also heard about like going to special schools. What does training to become a plumber look like? All right, the helper is the beginning stage. I started I was 25 as a helper. That's late for a helper. Okay. I was making four dollars an hour. Okay. After leaving corrections and everything, mm -hmm. I was making a thousand thousand dollars a week it was mm -hmm. pretty embarrassing I had to swallow my pride and just figure this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get this trade I'm gonna get a license right away when I was help I used to hold the life for my boss I'd sit behind Lily and hold the freaking life for him <laughs> and he'd be like, it's over here move he'd move my hand I couldn't hold the light right for him you know he'd, yeah. he'd move his head in the way that I got a little light you know it's a pain yes. in the butt but you go to the truck you get tools you clean up and everything mm -hmm. whatever he wants you to do you do mm -hmm. and eventually he'll let you solder a little bit once you start soldering you can put a toilet bowl in by yourself and you're kind of like a junior mechanic you can start okay. doing little things he might send you out on a job once in a while and it's good if you have a problem you call the boss on the phone look i got a power here power there mm -hmm. and he'll tell you well test this test that. he'll guide you through a little bit then okay. you go and you fix the job and then once you're a full-fledged mechanic that's when you have your own truck and you have a helper and of course each stage your salary increases and within uh seven months i basically had a truck already which yeah. is very quick because yeah. i run a quick i really was dedicated i mm -hmm. wanted it most helpers can be helpful for a couple of years before they get in the truck but mm -hmm. i learned very quickly i was a little older i learned a lot like that but that was learning to be a plumber. Learning to pass the test is like totally different. Okay. Yeah. So that's something you have to do on your own. That's something you do on your own. Your boss won't help you with that most likely because <laughs> he knows you're going to leave him if you get your license. So. That's true. That's right, true. So he's not. You got to go to these special training schools just to learn stuff. You need to pass the test to get your license. Now, if you don't do any of these schools, you can go take the test, but you're not going to pass. You stay as you stay a mechanic. These are non-union shops I'm talking about. You're a mm -hmm. mechanic. Your pay could go up to you know, $20, $25 an hour as a mechanic mm -hmm. and you're working for a boss you have your helper okay. and the only time you become a plumber is when you actually go and take your test and you pass your test okay then you're a licensed plumber got it everybody else is a mechanic got it yeah okay. so there, some people call themselves plumbers but they're not plumbers because okay. they don't have a license okay. without the license you're not a plumber even though some people say they are but they're not and they then can people do plumbing. like me just call everybody a plumber <laughs> right, they're right. not like thank you like yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. So that's a, that's a big thing. Okay, good to know. So you mentioned that you were working for a company. You did that for seven years. Did you learn everything that you needed for the test while working with the company? No. What I did basically, I got a job I, uh, with a plumbing company. Mm -hmm. You have to work at least seven years on the books. You need seven years back before you can get a license. Okay. So then once you get your seven years in, then you start with your testing. And there's a, a written test. And if you pass that, then you got to go for a practical test. And if you pass that, then you got to go for a plan reading test. That took me about three years. I didn't go apply for the next thing. So I knew I passed the first part. Is there anything that people would be surprised to find out about plumbing or being a plumber? Like, again, like the, the testing to become a plumber, you'd be surprised. People don't realize that the hard test you have to do. License tests, like 72 multiple choice, and I had to write essays, three essays. I wrote 10 pages of essays for a plumbing test, so. Wow. Yeah. Did you know what the questions were gonna be ahead of time, or you just had to go in? They repeat the questions a lot, okay. so you, you study all the previous tests and okay. know how to answer those questions. Luckily, three of those essays were what I was going over, so okay. I knew what I was gonna write, and it was like a regents test almost. So so is there any last like advice or tips that you would give to somebody who wants to be a plumber? Basically just watch and pay attention. I have a helper. My helper has been with me for 20 years and he can't do squat. All he's worried about is how much he's money he's making that. When is it time to go home? Any excuse not to come to work. So if you're going to be like that, mm -hmm. don't do it. But if you're really dedicated, watch the plumber, watch the mechanic, learn everything. Don't be afraid. If he says you want to solder this, solder it. I tell my guy, you want to know, you better do it. I might break it. It might leak. But you got to you gotta do it. You're going to mm -hmm. solder once or twice. If it leaks, then you're going to learn what you did wrong. And, and you, you know, so don't be afraid. Go for it, you know? Yeah. So you got to pay attention. Go to work. And don't just worry about the bucks. Sometimes, like, an emergency service job comes up. Your boss wants you to go do it. Go do it. Try to do it. And if you don't do it, he's going to come and help you or give you advice. Don't just say, oh, I'm not going to. I don't want to go there because if I can't do it, I'm not going to make money. You mm -hmm. can't just worry about the money all the time. It'll pay off in the end. Thank you so um, much. Like, I yeah. hope, like... Whether you want to be a plumber or not, I feel like today, like we just learned so much. The things that you can apply to any career, like humility, mm -hmm. being willing to try things and fail and come back again right. and find your way, giving yourself that freedom. The importance of character. No matter what job you have, you have to be a hardworking person. You have to be able to put the time in. You can't like, just like, right. when's lunch? When am I going right. home? Yeah. You can't just be concerned about money. You have to be concerned about people. The importance right. of people skills and being sure. likable and kind to people. Yeah. Like all of those things are important for success. It's not just necessarily what you know or what you can do. Right. It's also who you are as a person. Yeah. But if they like you, they're going to recommend you to other mm -hmm. people. And that's how it works. Best way to advertise, you know? Yep. Word of mouth. Thank so. you so much. <laughs> Yep. Well, thank you for watching Journey with Jordana. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time the video is posted with more information about your next step. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.